Hi, welcome to the presentation How to Renovate in Israel Without Going Crazy. My name is Debbie Shor Eliassi. I was born in Italy, in Milan. I am an architect. I graduated in architecture with honors from the Polytechnic University of Milan. I gained international work experience in architectural offices in Milan, Barcelona and Jerusalem. I assist my clients in planning houses, apartments and offices from the first steps of the project to the end, including the smallest details. I am specialized in green architecture. I work for Israeli clients as well as for foreign people speaking English, Italian and Spanish. In my work with people from other countries, I noticed that they were so frightened to renovate an apartment in Israel or to build a house if they didn't speak Hebrew fluently or even if they lived abroad. As someone who grew up in Italy and made Aliyah to Israel years ago, I can understand how the difference in the mentality and attitude here in Israel can create obstacles in the communication and in the peace of mind of New Orleans who come to Israel. I bridge this gap for them and make the building or renovating experience in Israel smooth and easy. And for this reason, we are here today. We will focus on how to renovate in Israel without wasting precious time and money. This presentation is divided into three sections. The first section deals with how to choose the most suitable architect. Secondly, we will learn how to choose the honest and professional builders and contractors. And last but not least, we will see what the common mistakes are and I will give you my advice to avoid them. So let's start. What are the common problems in Israel? Contractors often use poor quality materials. Exterior finishing are not precise. Contractors don't like to study new things. Systems like windows and roofs are not well done. And it could happen that the contractor leaves the work before the end. Why does it happen? People choose the contractor without enough accuracy. Nobody supervises the contractor during works. People let the contractor take design decisions. And there are eight common mistakes that we will see in the end. Additionally, not every designer is serious and professional. It is important to be informed about the training of the architect you consider to work with. In Israel, there are architects and interior designers who possess an academic degree for, from an officially recognized university. In addition to that, there are many private institutions who hand out interior design diplomas after a very short and unsupervised course. These designers are often not enough prepared. And the title of interior architect, in Hebrew, Adrechal Pnim, which many designers use, is not a qualified profession. You should be aware of this before choosing the professional designer you want to work with. You should also know that to receive building permits, you need a certified architect registered at the Architects Association in Israel, Rasham HaAdrechalim. And last but not least, your architect needs to know her way around the Israeli building market, how to draw up a realistic budget for your renovation, how to connect you with the right contractor, where to buy the best building and materials and accessories, and how to coordinate the project. Now, let's see how to choose the most suitable architect to plan your dream home here in Israel. First, ask to see her portfolio. This step is very important in order to see if you like her style. There are architects who design in one precise style, like country style or modern style and so on. If you don't like that style, it will be a really bad surprise to discover it after starting to work with her. Personally, I adapt myself to the client's dreams and needs. I think that my task is to assist my clients and help them visualize and fulfill their dream home. Speak with people who already work with her. This will be very important to see if she's easygoing and patient and if she tries to understand you or not. Ask her 
if you receive 3D sketches. 3D sketches are very important to visualize the space and understand how it's organized. You can view some samples here. Ask if work supervision is included. This stage is so important to be sure that the renovation is done properly. The architect should go to the apartment several times and check that the contractor works according to the architect's plans. When do you need a certified architect? Only a certified architect can ask and receive building permits. In Hebrew, etereibnia. Do you need an etereibnia when you want to add an extra room? Or when you want to change the facade, for example, adding a new window? Or when you want to add a new balcony or a lift in the building? We can now pass to the second item of the presentation. Usually, the most frightening step is how to find the right and trustworthy contractor that will do a precise job. My first advice is to ask your architect for help and advice. Each architect has usually his trusted builders and contractors. The benefit of working with them is high quality, easy communication with the architect, so that there will be less waste of time and fast results. Your architect should guarantee for the builder professionalism. And the contractors are interested in working well when they, when they receive the job from the architect. This way they will receive more jobs from her in the future. In case you want to check contractors not related with your architect, here there are some tips to follow to overstep some risks. First, go personally and check previous jobs done from the builder. Do not trust the pictures on websites. Check the details and the exterior finishing. There are a lot of builders and contractors that do badly done jobs and not that much precise. Check on recent jobs. From my experience, I can tell you that when contractors start to receive a load of new jobs requests, at times the quality of the job they do turn clearly poor especially if the contractor gets more jobs to work on at the same time, he can't personally follow the works and he hires fewer qualifi qualified people to complete the work for him. Sign a contract with well-defined terms and conditions and times. This can guarantee a deadline to work with and no time waste along the process. Divide the payment following the developing work steps. Never, but never, pay the full amount of money from the beginning. Ask your architect for his support or her support in divide the payment and check that each work is complete before paying and move on to the next step. And leave the last payment for the end, otherwise you risk that little finishing is left incomplete and ask for recommendations from people he has recently worked with. Mind the builders that are too cheap. Usually when the prices are too low, there is always something hidden. In a certain case, the damage can be a minor thing, like exterior finishing can be imprecise and not pleasant. The pictures below have been snapped by a colleague of mine in a new flat just right after the renovation works. Take a look at the mess they did. We could even have something worse than aesthetic issues. One of my clients decided to go for a cheap contractor and he found out to have plumbing damages in the toilet. He was forced to call and pay for a new plumber, and he wasted a lot of money and time. Of course, all this could have been avoided. Another story is about a guy I know who rainproofed the roof of his house with non-specialized workers for that job. He spent a lot, although not enough, and during the rainy days he found himself placing buckets around the house to collect water coming on the roof. In Hebrew, there is an expression that says, Lazol yesh mechir. 
It means that everything cheap has his real price. I think that this is particularly true in the construction and renovation fields. Cheap work has its price at end can up being more and more expensive. Let's move to the next item. Next and last. What are the common mistakes it would be better to avoid? Mistake number one. Inviting the contractor to give a quote before you received a, a detailed architectural plan. In such a situation, the contractor gives a general price quote according to an estimate of the most expensive work he thinks might be done. You have no way to know how the contractor came up with this figure and since there is no list detailing the cost per specific job, the contractor can always add to the quoted cost claiming additional costs that were not included in the original offer. So what to do? First of all, get the architect to plan with you the desired changes. Request the architect for a detailed plan as well as a list of all the works that should be done and only then proceed to invite a contractor in. This way the contractor will give you an exact cost per task. You can see now a sample of the list of works. This way it will be really easy to compare with different quotes because every contractor receives the same list. And more, if during the works you need to make changes it will be easy to know the price. You will just have to check the contractor quote. A tip. The material list should be done by an architect. Even if you speak Hebrew fluently, don't do it yourself. You can risk missing important points. Mistake number two. Including in the contractor's offer the supply of finishing materials, known as white materials. In Hebrew, chumarim levanim. Construction materials are divided into two categories. Black materials, chumarim shchorim, and white materials, chumarim levanim. Black materials are needed for the construction itself and are, for example, cement, pipes, mortar, adhesive, plaster, bricks, and so on. White materials are all the finishing, like flooring materials, tiles, sanitary appliances, windows, doors, if the contractor will include in his offer the supply of these materials, he is likely to provide the cheapest materials available to increase his profit. You have no way to check the quality of the materials and you are likely to end up paying more in the end. What to do? Ask the contractor for a quote on work that consists of black materials only, while you supply on your own the finishing materials, the white materials. Mistake number three, relying on unqualified professionals. This is particularly dangerous if the work requires particular skills or official authorization, for example, when upgrading to three-phase electricity. What to do? Check qualification of the electrician and <clears throat> a tip, ensure that the contractor has insurance and check what it covers. Mistake number four, Authorizing the contractor to bring in professional for work unrelated to, to the actual building or renovation, such as a carpenter. Similar to the issue of purchasing white materials, it is preferable that you hire the services of a carpenter yourself. This way you can control both the cost and the quality of the work. Mistake number five, ordering aluminium windows through the contractor. This is a double mistake. The sealing of openings is an important part of the renovation and it is unwise to compromise on this issue due to cost considerations. Inaccuracy by just one millimeter will result in the seeping in of water and cold air in the future. Contractors in Israel tend to use simply aluminium windows. It is a known fact that aluminium is an extremely poor insulating material. Have you noticed how it's burning hot in summer and cold and wet in the winter? So what to do? Purchase windows separately. You can find in Israel other excellent materials such as PVC, fiberglass, wood aluminium integrated and with far better insulating quality, even 10 times better than aluminium. 
The companies selling them will install them and provide many years of warranty. And more, there is a special glass called low E, that means low emissivity. This glass doesn't transfer heat from outside to inside and is particularly suitable for windows facing east and west. I prefer not to install it on south windows because the solar radiation from the south in Israel is excellent in the winter and not so hot in the summer. And last but not least, don't forget to choose a double insulating glazing. In the pictures, you can see some samples. Here on the left, you can see a section of a PVC profile. Look at its thickness and the double glass. The distance between the two glasses is relatively high. It can arrive till 16 millimeters instead of five or six of the traditional aluminum windows. This way, the insulation level will be much higher. On the right, you can see how the window looks like. This slide shows you a wood aluminum integrated profile. The wood is inside the house and the aluminum is outside. The two materials are separated by a plastic profile so that the cold and hot are not passing through the profile. Inside the house, you have the beauty of the wood and outside, the resistance of the aluminum. This picture had been taken in an apartment I designed in King David's Crown project here in Jerusalem. And in this apartment, the window is wood aluminum integrated. Mistake number six, save money on the VAT and pay without receiving an invoice. The receipts and the invoices are the proof of a job completed from the building company. Without them, in case of damage or mistakes, the contractor will not feel obliged to come and fix it. Mistake number seven, splitting the different jobs like plumbing and electricity among different workmen that don't depend from the head builder. This can become a problem because the contractor cannot guarantee the time and the quality of the labor supplied by the third party. For example, if the plumber delays on his work, the tiler will be late too and the head builder would be consequently late for delivery and couldn't assure you to finish the job on time. Mistake number eight. Go shopping to choose materials and furniture without your architect. Finally, the market in Israel is full of different materials and equipment at different costs and quality. If you go to the store on your own, you are likely to be confused by the endless options before you. Your architect will know to advise you on the best choices suitable for your apartment. And moreover, the store owner will be take you much more seriously if you arrived with a professional. For the store owner, the real client is the architect who can return the following day with new customers. Therefore, the store owner will make an effort to provide his customers with the best service regarding quality and price. Moreover, if you are a tourist in Israel, it's always better to go along with your architect to avoid any fraud or seller taking advantage and charging you extra money. We have arrived at the end. In, th in this presentation, we have seen how to choose the right architect and how to look for a serious and honest contractor. We saw what the common errors you should avoid are. Now you are more than welcome to contact me for any further question or to schedule an appointment. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.